Have you ever stood on a rocky cliff and wondered? How did the sea carve out such steep, rugged edges? Or seen an arch in the middle of the ocean and thought? How did that piece of rock get left behind? Welcome to Magfar Online, where we turn curiosity into clarity. In today's adventure, we're diving into the mighty power of the ocean, and how waves shape the coastline through erosion. From towering cliffs and deep caves to dramatic arches, isolated stacks, and worn-down stumps, we're exploring how the sea slowly but surely carves away the land. By the end of this lesson, you'll understand why certain parts of the coast erode faster than others. How wave action turns a simple crack into a cave, and a cave into an arch. And what the final stages of coastal erosion tell us about the strength of the sea. This is part of our series on Earth's changing surface, links to the previous and next videos are in the description below. Before we dive in, here's a wave-powered question to get you thinking. Which landform shows that an arch has collapsed, a cave, a stump, or a spit? Drop your answer in the comments, we'll feature a few top guesses in the next episode. And don't forget, there's a quiz at the end to test what you've learned, Magfar style. Hit like, subscribe, and tap the bell so you never miss a wave of knowledge. This is Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Let's explore how the sea sculpts the land, one wave at a time. Let's go! Wave erosion plays a powerful role in shaping our coastlines, especially along shores where strong, high-energy waves constantly crash against the land. These powerful waves are known as destructive waves. They are usually large, frequent, and carry a lot of energy. When waves crash or smash into the land, they have a strong backwash, which means they pull material like sand, stones, and even chunks of rock away from the shoreline. Over time, this action wears away the coast and forms dramatic landforms. Now, let's look at the main processes that make this happen. First, there's hydraulic action. This occurs when the force of the water pushes air into cracks in the rock. The pressure builds up until parts of the rock break off. It might seem slow, but over months and years, it can break down even the hardest cliff faces. Another important process is abrasion. This is when the waves throw pebbles and rocks against the coastline, scraping away the surface like sandpaper. The coastline gets chipped away little by little with each wave. Then we have solution, also known as corrosion. This happens when the salt water dissolves minerals in certain rocks, like chalk or limestone. The rock structure becomes weaker and easier to erode. It's a chemical process that works alongside the physical ones. Lastly, there's attrition. While this process doesn't wear down the coast directly, it helps break down the material the waves carry. As rocks and pebbles collide with one another, they become smaller and rounder. This makes them easier for the waves to move and use in other erosional processes like abrasion. Together, these processes, hydraulic action, abrasion, solution, and attrition, gradually shape the coast, especially in places with rocky headlands or uneven shorelines. Over time, they create dramatic landforms like cliffs, caves, arches, and stacks. Let's take a closer look at these fascinating features. Headlands and bays are classic coastal features that form due to a process called differential erosion. This happens when the coastline is made up of alternating bands of hard and soft rock running perpendicular or at right angles to the sea. The difference in rock hardness affects how easily each type can be eroded by wave action. Softer rocks such as clay, shale, or sandstone are less resistant to erosion. When waves continuously strike these areas, the softer rock is worn away more quickly. 
Over time, this erosion creates wide, curved indentations in the coastline known as bays. Bays are typically sheltered, shallow inlets where the sea can gently wash up against the land. Because wave energy is dispersed in these areas, bays often become sites of deposition, where beaches form from the buildup of sand and other sediments. In contrast, harder rocks like granite, basalt, or limestone are more resistant to the erosive force of waves. These rocks erode much more slowly and remain protruding into the sea as headlands. A headland is a prominent, high, and rocky piece of land that juts out from the main coastline. Because headlands are exposed to the full force of incoming waves, they experience intense erosion, especially at their base, where features like caves, arches, and stacks may eventually form. A cliff is a steep or even vertical rock face found along coastlines. These impressive landforms are mainly shaped by the force of wave erosion, and they're most common in places where powerful, destructive waves strike against resistant rock like chalk, limestone, or granite. You'll typically see cliffs along rocky coastlines, especially in areas where erosion is happening much faster than deposition. So, how do cliffs actually form? It all starts when destructive waves, which are high energy and have strong backwash, repeatedly crash into the base of a coastal slope or headland. These waves don't just splash, they work like natural tools. Through hydraulic action, abrasion, and solution, they slowly erode the bottom of the rock. Over time, this constant erosion forms a wave-cut notch, which is a hollow area at the base of the cliff. As this notch gets deeper, the rock above it becomes unstable because there's nothing left to support it. Eventually, gravity takes over and the upper part of the rock collapses. When this happens, the cliff retreats inland. But the waves don't stop there, they start eroding the new base, and the whole process continues. This is how cliffs slowly move backward over many years. Sometimes, the fallen material is broken up by the sea or washed away, especially if the area is very exposed to strong wave action. Now, when the collapsed rock is cleared, it often leaves behind a wave-cut platform. This is a flat, rocky surface at the base of the cliff, and it's usually visible during low tide. It shows you just how far the cliff has retreated over time. Let's summarize some key features of cliffs. Cliffs are steep and rocky, usually facing the sea. They're found along exposed coastlines with hard rock and are formed by erosion, not deposition. You'll often find wave-cut notches and platforms at their base, and they're constantly changing shape because of continuous wave action and collapse. If you want real-world examples, just think of the White Cliffs of Dover in England, those tall, bright chalk cliffs shaped by centuries of wave erosion. South Africa's wild coast, especially in the Eastern Cape, has rugged cliffs that have been sculpted by the power of the sea. Over time, waves concentrate their energy on zones of weakness in coastal headlands, such as cracks, joints, or bedding plains in the rock. As waves continuously strike the base of the headland, the force of the water, along with rock fragments carried by the waves, begins to enlarge these openings. This ongoing erosion slowly hollows out the rock, forming a sea cave. The process may take many years, but with persistent wave action, the cave becomes deeper and wider, extending into the body of the headland. These sea caves are often found at the base of steep cliffs, and they tend to face the direction from which the waves approach. The size and shape of the cave depend on the rock type, the direction of wave attack, and how long the erosion has been taking place. In some cases, caves may eventually become large enough to lead to the formation of arches, especially if the erosion breaks through the other side of the headland. The cave represents an early stage in the erosion of headlands, showing how wave action gradually shapes and transforms coastal landscapes. 
As wave erosion continues to act on a sea cave, especially in a headland where the rock is exposed on both sides, the cave may deepen and extend further inland. With time, the erosive forces on either side of the headland may eventually meet, and the cave breaks through to the opposite side. When this happens, it creates an arch, a natural bridge of rock with a curved opening beneath it, allowing water to pass through. The roof of the arch remains supported by the surrounding rock, while waves continue to erode the base. Arches are among the most dramatic and visually striking coastal landforms, often admired for their beauty and scale. However, they are also temporary features, the continued action of waves, combined with weathering processes like wind and rain, will weaken the arch roof over time. Eventually, the roof collapses, leaving behind a separate, upright pillar of rock known as a stack. The formation of an arch therefore represents a transitional phase in the erosion of headlands, showing how the coastline is constantly being reshaped by the power of wave action. Once an arch has formed along a headland, the ongoing forces of nature begin to weaken it further. The roof of the arch, constantly exposed to weathering agents such as rain, wind, and frost, starts to break down. These weathering processes weaken the structural integrity of the arch until it can no longer support its own weight. Eventually, the roof collapses, leaving behind a stack, a tall, isolated column of rock that stands apart from the headland in the sea. With the protective cover of the headland gone, the stack is now fully exposed to the continuous pounding of destructive waves. The base of the stack is gradually eroded through the same processes that shaped it, hydraulic action and abrasion, causing it to narrow and become unstable. Over time, the stack loses height and collapses further, reducing to a much smaller feature called a stump. A stump is usually only visible at low tide and lies close to the surface of the water. It represents the final stage in the coastal erosion of a headland and is a reminder of how powerful and relentless the sea can be in reshaping coastlines over time. We've just uncovered how waves shape the coastline through erosion, carving steep cliffs, hollowing out caves, forming dramatic arches, and leaving behind isolated stacks and stumps. Now it's your turn to test your knowledge. Pause the video, answer the questions coming up, and check your answers on screen. Lock in what you've learnt, MacFar style. But don't go anywhere just yet. Next up on MacFar Online. We'll explore how the sea doesn't just take away land, it also builds it up. Join us as we uncover the amazing features of deposition caused by wave action. From golden beaches and sweeping spits to calm lagoons, longshore drift and natural sandbars. You'll learn how waves work like nature's builders, one gentle deposit at a time. Why do spits form more easily on curved coastlines than straight ones? Drop your answer in the comments, we'll give shout outs in the next episode. So hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you're first in line when the next lesson drops. This is Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Stay curious, stay sharp, and we'll see you on the beach in the next video.